Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some Dwarf Fortress, the newest version. So we uh, we have a new version of Dwarf Fortress. It's version 4008R2. And I've been holding off since the, the major patch that came out in early July for Dwarf Fortress. It's been a couple years since the last major patch. But I was waiting for the Lazy New Pack to get updated and also to get all of the add-ons that I'm used to used to using functional. And so we have those things. So it's time to set up a fortress. You can consider this to be episode zero of the series. We're going to do some basic things like set up the world and then um, choose an embark location. And then episode one will be this the video where we actually start playing Dwarf Fortress. Now, I'm going to pretext this whole thing by saying that this is not a tutorial series. There are um, there should or will be links in the description down below to some of my older Dwarf Forces Dwarf Fortress series, which were a little bit more tutorial-esque. Um, the Masterwork Dwarf Fortress in, in particular was about trying to teach people how to play. This one's just going to be for fun, so I, I may explain things as we go, but I, I don't want people to think that um, that this is the video you should watch for tutorial type stuff. Not to mention Captain Duck already did a really good job with all that. So we're going to use Sound Sense and Dwarf Therapist primarily. We're also probably going to eventually start using Quick Fort if I can remember how that works. Go ahead and maximize the game. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a world. I don't know why it does all this stuff anymore. It's, it's kind of strange. The music won't turn on until we're actually in the game, but we can probably, if I remember correctly, um, find a song and make it play. Let's see. We're looking for, like, music. These are all sounds that uh, the game adds. Here, we're looking for seasons. Um, let's have it play a, or is this just the one that talks about when the seasons have changed? Oh, nope. Here's, here's summer songs. Here we go. The season is summer. <laughs> no, that's, that's really not what I had in mind. Summer is at hand. <laughs> that's not at all what I want. Oh, jeez. Okay, there we go. A little bit of music. Okay, so aside from that, we're going to create a, a large world. We want the history to be long duration, number of civilizations, um, let's just say medium, maximum number of sites, medium, number of beasts, medium, average savagery, savagery, savagery. I can say that word, I swear. Mineral occurrence. Let's go ahead and leave it on... Um, sparse that's like normal setting frequent is just too often maybe we even maybe we bump up savagery a bit just for some fun let's go ahead and generate a world and we're gonna let this run for a couple minutes and we'll talk about dwarf fortress while we're doing that but what this is gonna do is oh and actually we've got uh two songs running at once right now i manually told it to play rogue bard and it's, it's already playing a song for the world generation. So what, what SoundSense does, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's an add-on to the game. It's not part of Dwarf Fortress. And what it does is it, it parses the log file, the game data file, and then plays songs based on when stuff happens. So when you begin generating a world, for example, it's going to start playing world gen song. When uh, it detects that summer has arrived, it plays that weird sound effect that we heard. And it will play random music. When there's combat and other stuff like that, it'll make sounds. And so right now what's happening is we're generating a massive world, um, procedurally generating a complete world and simulating hundreds if not thousands of years of history and cool stuff. It's cool stuff right now. So it's already rejected 10 regions. It's going through and like it's got certain requirements that have to be met before it can consider it to be a good world. The world itself is so, so large that we're not going to use much of it. You know, we're going to pick a very small embark location. We're going to go build a fortress in it and then go from there. So right now it's placing beasts, making cave populations, placing random civilizations, and now it's simulating history. So far there have been 4,000, now 5,000 people. This is how many people are dead. So you can see that the population would be the historical figures minus the number of dead. Population of the world is growing and we're seeing like civilizations live and die. And world gen itself, you could stop it right now. You could just press enter or escape and just, just be done with world gen and 
you'd be able to build a fortress just the same, but some people really get into this game for the randomized stories, and they like the idea of playing on adventure mode and like questing in it, and actually Toady, the main main guy who makes Dwarf Fortress, he and his brother make the game, he is he seems to be entirely focused on the adventure mode, which I personally think is a mistake. Dwarf Fortress is all about building a fortress in my mind. It's called Dwarf Fortress. Well, actually, technically it's called Dwarf Fortress Slaves of Arnok or something, but... Um, so, let's take a look at the map. We are using a, a graphical tile set, which replaces the ASCII tile set with, like, pictures and stuff. Little tiny 16 by 16 pixel grid. So you can see water here. This is, uh, like, grass, trees, stuff like that more stuff. Um, these are clearly roads, and then these little dwarf looking statues represent civilizations and populations. These little yellow guys are elves or something. Um, this purplish pink color is uh, cursed territory. And so we're only in year 140. We won't let it run for too long. Like, I don't want to spend 10 minutes just sitting here letting it generate. I might just wrap the video up and then let it generate off camera or something, or I'll edit. Uh, maybe, no, probably not. Probably not gonna edit. So, we're currently looking at the Elven Forest Retreat of Thithuica. The Criterious Forests. The Age of Myth. Population's about 15,000 right now. Ooh, look at that. Someone just added a road. The ability for your computer to simulate this history ends up taking longer and longer and longer the further in you get the more characters that there are one of the unfortunate drawbacks to how old this game is is that dwarf fortress has been in development for gosh i don't even know like a decade and so the concept of multi-core processing wasn't even around i think when they started making it so this is a single processor game your computer like, I have a hex core that has, um, it has, like, phantom cores or whatever. Essentially, it's got 12 cores, 6 physical cores and 6 phantom cores, and so it's a 12-core processor, and yet only one of them works. So it doesn't really matter how good your computer is, the game's going to run as fast as it can run. It doesn't use your graphics card, it doesn't use the vast majority of your processing power. About the only thing you can do to actually increase the speed that Dwarf Fortress runs is overclock the processor to make the one core that it uses run faster. Um, but that's okay. I mean, the game can still run really well on most modern computers. In fact, even at, you know, just reduce the overall frame rate, you can play on almost anything like a laptop or even a couple year, five year old computer can run it just fine. So I think we'll probably let it go, oh, I don't know, maybe to 250 years of history. That might actually be the default duration that I had had it set to, I don't recall. This is the human hamlet of Rithiko. Hills of Kissing. Quite a bit of cursed territory over here. Now occasionally you will see icons that make no sense in the world map, like this cabinet, for instance, is used in other, other depictions, and like this little this little thing that looks like it's got an axe and some blades on it, that is an armory. And it's used on the world map to represent other things. And, like, that's a chest, which doesn't really make sense. That's a little house. Like, one of the things about this is it, if you can play it with ASCII, you should be able to suspend your disbelief that it's not, like, accurate or whatever in uh, the tile set mods as well. Because... Ultimately, you're just looking at... It's, it's all in your imagination. Uh, a huge part of this game is about being able to imagine what you're seeing. And like, you know, imagine dwarves throwing each other around the room by their pinkies. Because that's what they do. Because they're weird. Oh, well, we're 255 years in. Let's go ahead and end it there. Just press enter, and then it will pause. And now we can actually move around and look around if we wanted to check things out. But we don't really want to do that. It's a pretty significantly large world. Very large, in fact. But uh, we're going to press U to continue 
and just use the world as is. It's finalizing everything. Okay. The name of this world is Ruspzlugo. Ruspzlazgo. The Eternal Universes. All right. Sounds great. We accept this world. Offletting the 18,000 units that apparently still live. It has been about a year since I played Dwarf Fortress last, and the last time I played it, I, I can't recall if it was the vanilla campaign I did or the Masterwork Dwarf Fortress mod, but um, by no means am I an expert at this game, and especially after having not played it for a year and a major patch having happened. Um, we'll make some mistakes along the way, but it should be fun. It should be a pretty interesting experience. It may have been better to not generate a large world. Okay, so we're good to go. We're ready to start playing. I had already generated a previous world, Region 1, but we're going to play in Ruspelzlugo, which you'll never see that name again for the most part. We're going to play in Fortress Mode. We created the world, simulated history, and now we are loading it up. And this is some sort of calendar. Every month is 28 days long, and you can actually see it processing a few days in the top left corner of the... the number that's highlighted is shifting so like a week has passed and i think every time you load the game in it it passes a few days or a couple weeks or something time is always passing yep two weeks on the dot okay so now we're trying to decide where to embark. We're going to choose a, uh, a decently large embark location, probably do a little bit larger than normal. I want to see, I've never played Dwarf Fortress on this computer, so I do want to see if it can handle it any better than my previous computer could. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the Find Desired Location button. We're going to be looking for a location now up here in the top right. We're going to look for something that's 6x6. Six six. We want the, um, we do want a river. We would like to see some Soil, uh, we'll just, we'll just let that be random. Some shallow metal, yes, and some deep metal, yes. Aquifer, no. An aquifer just is like underground water that is difficult to, to dig through. We don't want to deal with that. A fluxstone layer, definitely. Fluxstone is used in, um, like converting, like making metal. You have raw metal, but you need fluxstone to make steel, that kind of thing. Other than that, we don't really care too much about elevation, savagery, evil, that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and click enter, do search. And so now you can see on the world screen, it's parsing from top down, row by, or column by column. It's going to go across this whole map and search for any of these locations that meet these criteria. And currently it's searched e about 12 out of 289 available tiles. So this is going to take it just a moment, but... Again, this is this is episode zero. I mean, if you're watching this, it's because you wanted to see how the game got set up. So, even if this video ends up being 30 minutes long, it's just going to be whatever it is. Unfortunately, the music stopped, though. Let's go ahead and turn that uh, manual playback back on. Maybe we can replay World Gen. Apparently not. Okay, fine. We'll just load up um, Quest Overworld Theme 1. Very nice. One of the nice things about SoundSense is that um, I believe all of the music, every sound file, is in the public domain. So don't have to worry about YouTube getting all hissy about using this SoundSense sound pack. Or rather, I've never had any issues with any of the other Dwarf Fortress videos that I uploaded a year ago with this music. But we're good there. You can see the red. Every now and then it's pulsing the red. Those are tiles that don't match any of these criteria. The green ones are ones that do, do fit the criteria. A 6x6 embark location is going to be pretty big. The Eternal Universes. The wooden continent. I think, I mean, it is it is pretty damn impressive that the game can 
generate a whole world and name it, name stuff dynamically and intelligently, and it's it's pretty pretty impressive. So I've got my dwarf therapist all set up. We're going to be using that. We can't connect and use it yet because we're not actually into the game. If you're not familiar with dwarf, dwarf therapist, this allows you to visually see all of your dwarves and what their attributes and labors are. Labors being like what jobs they're allowed to do. And then more importantly, um, a while back, some guy named Splinter Cell or Splinter Mind or something like that extended the the therapist add-on and added in the attributes and roles and stuff and so we've got a thing called optimizer which will automatically appoint dwarves to the jobs that they're best at which is incredibly useful rather than having billy bob who's terrible with mining do mining we'll have sally joe and uh it'll go well we've also got df hack running in the background which is a an extension to the game as well this basically injects itself into the dwarf fortress code and allows it to do some extra stuff, like, say, actually have mouse functionality. Um, right now it's throwing out a whole bunch of errors because, again, the game had just been patched about a month ago, and we've seen already, like, ten updates to the game since it came out. It's hard for the, the mod makers, people that work on things like Dwarf Hack, DF Hack, to actually keep it fully up to date. In fact, we're not even playing the most recent version of Dwarf Fortress. Uh, the most recent version is uh, 40 underscore 09 R1, but Dwarf Hack wasn't functional with that version, so I had to roll back to 4008 R2 just to, to be able to have all the features that I want. Sounds like our music is over again. It'll be nice when we get into the game and the music plays automatically. Of course, achievements, evidently. Enable achievements. Okay, sure. Maybe it'll play special sound facts for us when that happens. Okay, how about Expeditionary? What's that sound like? Almost there. 50 or so more. It is important, I think, to use the match criteria search thing, find desired location, because you don't want to play for a few hours and then find that there's no flex stone on your map or something. That would just be miserable. In other news, I have a hangnail. It's driving me nuts. I need nail clippers. Am I the only one that does that while you're waiting for stuff? Like, look at your fingers. Okay, so now the flashing greens are suitable locations. Um, we don't want to do another search. That would that would be bad. We're going to press escape to browse results. And so now, we are currently scrolling. Y you can see the whole map. This is the whole world here. This is the region. This is the local, local zone. So we're focused on this screen right here right now. We're looking at that. So on this screen, you can actually see this is representing this. So even though this section looks like water, we can also see the island here, and then this each one of these is the individual full square. So what we need to do is we need to take this and go find a section that makes sense. Now I would like, before we do it, to change mode. I want to find the different civilizations. Okay, so neighbors, dwarves, so he, these are the different, there's this many different dwarven civilizations. And we want to use plus and minus to select them. And so now, on the world map, we can see where these different dwarven civilizations live. The walled fortification was this little itty bitty tiny civilization right here. The, rel the relieved ores was much larger down here. Mountain of fires it was even bigger. The Triangular Sling lived over here. Lantern of Permanencies is here. Secretive Shields. Nourishing Theater. Well, let's go ahead and we'll play as the... Uh, why don't we do the, the Mountain of Fires? And so that'll help us to determine like where on the map we want to settle. To settle. Apparently I'm still online on Steam. Oh, that's right, I just did the EU4 announcement video. So 
Sorry about that. I don't even. Steam always puts you online. Kind of annoying. Okay, so where are we? Where are we? We are here, which is here. So now we want to, on this map, find something that's got the flashing green. And that's basically saying, yes, you have all the things you asked for. And then it's going to automatically choose that 6x6 six six tile that has those things. That one has a nice river that goes right through it. Relative elevation. Okay, so cliff indicator flat. So this, um, it's flat in the river. We got like a river that goes right through the center. And then the cliffs are rather sharp. And then they taper off down this way. Steep banks that lead down into the river. Okay. That seems fine. What else? This is the Swamp of Evenness, Freshwater Marsh, Temperate, Trees, Woodland, Other Vegetation, Moderate, Surroundings are Untamed Wild, so a little bit dangerous. We've got a stream, We've got some soil, shallow metal, deep metal, and a flux stone layer. Okay, this sounds good. We'll embark here. You have selected a large area. Choose a smaller, and smaller area if you experience lags. Okay. We're going to prepare for the journey carefully. And... Um, now, now that we're actually in the screen, we can use Dwarf Therapist to connect. And it will actually be able to read our dwarves. Let's uh, pick another song, because I don't like it when there's no music. Okay, um, and then what I like to go to is you go to the um, attributes. And you can actually like see like what they'd be good at, or roles. And then appoint people who are already pretty good. These guys are actually pretty average at everything. They're really not that uh, stupendously good at one thing or another. So you know what? Maybe we'll actually just do this. Let's go... Well, shoot. I kind of already chose to prepare carefully. Alright, well, that's fine. We need a miner. We're going to go with um, probably just an, an adequate miner. We're going to need... Hmm. We'll need a woodcutter. Uh, we'll go ahead and make the woodcutter as well into a decent carpenter. The miner's just going to be a miner. He's not really going to do anything else. Risen. Current dwarf name. We're going to need a mason who can probably also double in the beginning as a uh, stone crafter. Basically, he's going to work with stone. We will want a cook and a brewer. He can brew and cook for us. We will want someone who is decent at some other random stuff like butching and tanning and a little bit of leather work would be okay. We don't really need to have skills and much else, I think. I'm not really too worried about having someone who's like, oh, I'm a really good leader. Ah, whatever. We could use a wood cutter. Someone okay, so a wood cutter is gonna be someone who's gonna be outdoors. Did I already do a carpenter? I think I did. Oh, I already did a wood cutter. Oops. Building designer. Eh. You can be just a general purpose guy that works with stuff. And it's never a bad idea to have extra skills in stone crafting. Fisherman, hell no. And, uh, grower, sure. Already have a cook. Already did those things. Didn't add a novice cheese maker. Just like a tiny bit of skill. We're gonna get a whole bunch of more, more dwarves that are gonna help us out. Let's go tab now and choose some items. So we're gonna start off with all these items already. We can add more to it. So we're gonna start off with two copper picks, two copper battle axes, an iron anvil. Um, are there any other types of anvil, I wonder? New anvil. Not in the meat category. I want it in... Uh, oh, you know what? There, that's right, we're playing vanilla. There are, it's just the one type of anvil. So we better bring one. 
Okay, what else do we really want to bring? We've got 40 units of Dwarven Rum, 20 units of Wine, some Plump Helmet Spawns. We're bringing Buckets, Splints, um, a Wooden Wheelbarrow. But, you know, we can build our own wheelbarrow. Let's get rid of that. And really, um, all I'd probably like to bring in addition to the normal stuff would be just some puppies and some dogs. So we got the little gender indicator. That's a female dog. We'll bring a female dog and a male dog. We'll bring a couple chickens, if possible. We don't need... Well, let's... We'll bring a couple cats. Two males, though. We don't want a whole... Well, I guess we'll bring... We'll kill all the kittens. Eat them. We need a, a hen. Let's, let's bring, like, say, three hens. And one rooster. And drakes are baby ducks. Or it's a male duck, rather. Goose, geese, all that stuff. There's all kinds of animals. We don't want to bring all... Too much. And really, other than that, um, new, we want to bring some milk because you can turn that into cheese right away. And we will kind of, kind of take advantage. The more separate units of things that you bring, the more barrels you get. Every separate item is a barrel. We don't need it be too cheesy about it, but let's just bring a bunch of milk. I don't, I don't even care, really. I don't, I don't want to play as gimmickly as possible. I don't think it's necessary. Just bring a ton of donkey milk. We'll turn it all into cheese. No, the live off cheese. Two copper pick. That's fine. We got enough. We got everything we need. Let's name the fortress. So right now it's called Wheel Parched, Revere Tool, Book Boots, Honor Pillars, We could go through and, like, try to, to... Simple castles. I like that, actually. That's pretty cool. We will select that. It's called Guzrimtar. We select. Um, escape for done. Okay, so it's Guzrimtar. Prepare for the journey to Guzrimtar. And then group name. We are going to be called... The Hammer of Virginity. <laughs> Why not? We are Nil Forat from the... <laughs> that's great. Okay, so um, that sounds good. So the journey to Guruzim Tar, which I've already forgot what that means, um, but it sounded good at the time. We're ready to embark. Let's do this. Okay, so that's going to wrap up episode zero. Episode one will begin in a moment. I'm going to take a break here. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in a bit.